I'm sorry, this medicine isn't covered by your insurance. Yeah. <laughs> I decide which medicines you can get. Wait, you're not my doctor. That's right. I'm your insurance company's pharmacy benefit manager. And as we had mentioned, people still trying to build back after Idalia, so they're going to need the support of the numerous nonprofits that are still on the ground. Joining us now, Steve Smith, founder and CEO of Airlink, which is a nonprofit that helps with the logistics side of response and recovery. Steve, thank you for joining us this evening. You know, we don't often talk about the logistics side of responding to a natural disaster, but it's necessary and it's a big undertaking. Explain to us what Airlink does and how help with the disaster, uh, how it helps with the disaster relief efforts. Great, thanks so much. Uh, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Marissa. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, so, my organization, Airlink, uh, is a disaster logistics nonprofit that provides free air transportation and logistical support to a global partner network of over 200 uh, disaster response nonprofits. And so, we eliminate the transportation cost barriers for disaster response organizations deploying to help in the aftermath of disasters. And we provide these services for free because of cash donations from the public. Uh, and also in-kind donations through airline partners like American Airlines and United Airlines, who have helped us with our recent uh, Italian response. And I think, you know, logistics is very much the untold and perhaps not so exciting story of uh, disaster response. But I can tell you this, if you get it wrong, people don't get the aid they need. Yeah, it's so typically. Important. I was going to say that, Steve, is something we don't talk about enough because being on the ground responding to these storms and covering them, you see how fluid all of these teams are. And that's such a step that you provide that so many people overlook. I want to ask you for Hurricane Adalia specifically, how many people were you able to uh, send in response? Sure, yeah. So to date, we've uh, been able to support five different nonprofits with uh, 46 responders. And so they will be going in to do things like mass feeding and uh, clean up and recovery. And so that might not sound so many, but the first few responders are absolutely critical. They conduct on the ground needs assessments, uh, do the forward planning and establish sort of operational basis for nonprofits that will continue to provide uh, vital services as people pick back everything up over the next weeks and months to come. And so, you know, making sure that the right aid uh, goes to the right place and uh, things are stored um, appropriately. Um, when we look at disaster response, it really unfolds in phases. The first phase is all about uh, ground needs assessments and forward planning. Second phase is ramping up the distribution of aid, making sure we get the right quantities to the right places that need it. And the final phase is uh, recovery and rebuild. And so communities need support long after the event occurs. And so uh, that's what we're trying to do is create a path for responders to help at each phase. And real quickly before we have to leave, you only have about 20 seconds left. How are you guys prepping? You know, we're watching Hurricane Lee. When you see these storms that are starting to brew, especially out in the Atlantic, um, what do you do to make sure you're ready should something happen? 